Welcome, Cabbage Crew. Uh, What's up, Cabbage is, Crew? This is our uh, predictions of Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix live action series that will be coming out and streaming on Thursday. Um, and as always, I'm John, and this is uh, Matt, my good old buddy from Baltimore. Woo woo. <laughs> um yeah yeah uh, thursday february 22nd is when the show comes out uh and um and yeah we can talk about some of our um well not predictions but more of things that we're worried about things that we feel like they're gonna do really good at uh i mean prediction i i, I predict that no, I mean, we're, we're definitely worried about it <laughs> yeah, before i know what's gonna happen but like things that we might think that they're gonna change either for good or bad and um, and yeah, so I mean, do you want to get us started on on? I mean, I know you've seen some of the trailers, and and are you positive, negative? Where are you at on everything? Um, I so I was initially at like a six and a half ish out of ten, mm-hmm. uh, just because it's never going to live up to the OG cartoon. I mean, it, it, I hope, I hope it does. I hope it lives up very close to it. Um, but I am very pessimistic ever, ever since the movie that shall not be named came out. Um, and I, I do think that they're going to get some things right. Um, like in terms of casting, um, which they, I think we, we both agree on for the most part. Um, and, uh, the, 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 the trailer looked promising the first, the, not, 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 well, the teaser was good, but the, the two, the first big trailer, first like, trailer. Over, yeah, over, yeah. over two minutes, uh-huh. um, it looked promising in terms of the world building in terms of, um, like the, the bending looked better, a lot better than, uh, yeah. than again, the movie that cannot be named. Um, and not a lot to live up to, <laughs> not, not, a, not a lot to be. It's you know, it's it's such a low bar, but um, bar is not high, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's not a high bar, but yeah, I mean, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I watched the first trailer and, and for the most part, positive. The second trailer has gotten me a little, I think, the more they show, the more uncertain I am. Um, I personally have already kind of, I mean, I talked about it a little bit ago. I might, I mean, I like Boomy, but I don't think it adds too much of the story in the sense of like the overworking picture. And I think Boomy is going to be very hard to translate into live action without it looking goofy and cheesy. Um, they might not pull it off. They might pull it off. I don't know, but that's been a lot of the trailers have been Boomy. Um, yeah, the, so, the, Boomy, the Boomy thing that you showed me, I was like, Cringe, very cringe. cringe. My thing is, a lot of it seems there's some things that seem cringy, um, right? And and some things I really like. Is there dad? Some yep. things I really like, and some things I'm like, mm, they might get cringy on this. Uh, I will I will say like, I've heard rumors of certain changes. A big one that we've already talked about, or we've talked about personally, is the soccer change of him not being a sexist for the first couple episodes, right? I personally don't care too much about that because that is a mini arc that is done before a third of the first season. Like we are pretty much done that whole arc. That's like a four episode arc for Sato, right? Sure. They have now talked about Zuko might not be actually his goal is not to gain his honor back in the sense of his, him and his father in the relationship and, um, and how his father views him and, I think that's a misstep. Can I just add? Real yeah, yeah, yeah. I so that th- th- I this is why, like, part of the reason why I just don't buy into the online sh- shenanigans that goes on uh, of like, oh my gosh, I've heard that this is going to happen, and like, it's mm-hmm. not really. I-, I wait till it comes out to actually view, like, have my own view towards it, mm-hmm. because just just like the article that you're describing, or like the uh, like Facebook post that you saw. Uh-huh. Yeah, the next, the next one I saw uh, said that the actor who played Zuko, um, it he he said that it actually is about defending and going after my honor, 
Like it's it's supposed to right. uh, like about the father son relationship. He, he said right. it's more along the lines of that. Um, and so that's what the actor said. So it's it's conflating it's conflating reports. Uh, I don't I don't buy into it until I see it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it seems it, it seems like we've talked about this before. Season one is very difficult to do because season one is episodic. It is every episode stands on its own. Uh, season two is a little bit more. Season two and and. Season three is kind of episodic too for different points and stuff, but season one is very much new town, new characters, new world building, new lessons, new story, move on to the next town. You know, we arrive, there's a little town that's getting imprisoned. Katara has a little story that is more of a Katara built story that is building up Katara. We meet a couple of new characters that we don't really see again, or at least we don't see again until way later. And it fleshes out that story. Imprisoned. Jet. I mean, endless episodes. Like, literally, endless episodes. Batu and the Water Tribe. Um, every one of them. I mean, every one of them, I would say, besides the first three to four episodes, five episodes, and the last three to four episodes, um, they're all individual episodes going to different towns. Uh, Northern Air Temple, The Fortune Teller, um, the, the, the episode with the pirates, I forgot what it was called, the waterbending scroll, all these different episodes. There's a couple episodes that blend together, like the Spirit World Part 1, Part 2, with Hey Bai and Roku, but very much a lot of different episodes that are just thrown in, of different towns, different stories, different everything. That is very hard to, to make into eight episodes unless you combine certain stories together. Um, we all saw the first trailer. It seemed like the characters they meet in the, in the Northern Air Temple are in Omashu. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't make sense. But which doesn't, really doesn't make sense. But we'll see. We'll see how they make it make sense. Maybe those characters are traveling. Maybe they meet those characters at the Southern Air Temple. Maybe Aang goes to the Southern Air Temple. And oh my god, the last airbender. Oh wait, never mind. There's a couple airbenders flying mm -hmm. around. Holy crap, no, you guys are just impersonating it. And then they, and then they follow them or whatever. Um, who knows? I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is is that they have to change some things if they want to keep all the characters and all the themes and all the stories. So and that was like Teo, right? Like that was like Teo mm -hmm. and Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, and and so they're going to be cutting some of that stuff out, which is perfectly fine. Uh, it's because it's eight episodes. My, I guess, my biggest thing is how are they going to flesh those things out without it seeming kind of like seeming not making sense, and also the overarching story, how they're going to, because they've already said, for instance, there's going to be gaps. It's not going to be about getting it in nine months, which I think me and you can both agree. The, per, the, the perfection of Avatar Last Airbender <laughs> is that, you know, he learns water during the winter, which reflects water. He learns earth in book one, book two, earth. He learns during the spring, book three, fire, learns during the summer. Um, and the whole real point is Aang has to learn it all so fast. And that's part of the anxiety of it all. And, and so, they might change some things around, which is okay. Um, but again, is it just, really okay? I, I was gonna say, but is it really okay? okay. Um, but I, I, I just want to make sure that when I'm watching it, I'm like, these creators knew what they're. The, these creators know the story of Avatar: Last Airbender. Well, the original creators left this project, so we can talk about that for a hot second. Because the original creators were on the on this project, and they left, and they made a huge post about it of. Uh, you know, they mentioned how they were going to, the creators of the live action were going in a different direction than what the original creators wanted to do. And so they left, as in uh, Michael DiMartino and um, Brian Canisco. Mm -hmm. um, they, the original creators of the cartoon, they left and they formed their own studio called Avatar Studios. Um, so do you think it's do you think it was that or the or the I guess the the opposite, which is they were going to be executive producers, they had a little bit of conflicts, and then Netflix, after the success of Avatar or Netflix, said, Hey, we want to make Avatar Studios. Or, or I'm sorry, so Netflix said, This is a popular show, we want to make a movie, and Nickelodeon said, Oh, wait. 
Avatar is way more popular than we actually thought. We want to bring you guys back to make Avatar Studios. You have you won't be some executive. You will have full control of your own story, and you can move forward with your story. Well, then they said, you know what? Let's take let's take let's pl- let's take that option. We'll, you know. Well, all we know is that there was some kind of conflict between the original creators and the and live action. Thing. And that's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing new there. It's just about like what kind of conflict was it? Did they actually come to an agreement of what you were just talking about with Avatar Studios being being separate but Netflix controlling it? I thought it, I was under the assumption that they were just two separate things, and that I think maybe yeah, Nickelodeon Avatar Studios is Nickelodeon still, right? That's what I thought, and yeah. so uh, I think I think that Avatar Studios will go Paramount. to yeah, it will be Paramount, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, Paramount, I think, owns Nickelodeon or something along the lines of that. But. Right. So, like, it'll be on Nickelodeon slash Paramount Plus if you have that streaming service. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's definitely definitely something. I mean... And I think, I'm just uh, saying, like, real quick that I think it says something that if the original creators left the show, I left the live action, mm-hmm. that just says something that... I think we're about to see. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm expect. I, I'm expecting subpar. That's so why I gave it like a six and a half out of ten. I think there are some things that got right, and then some things that'll that'll get wrong. Like I said, I think character um, character casting was very good. You, um, you gave what six and a half out of ten? The trailer? Six, no, it just I think the whole eight episodes will be a six and a half out of ten. Uh, okay, your prediction is um, yeah. So like you know, if it's if it's you know. If it's bad, if it's like a three out of ten, then it's like okay, I, I'm not too disappointed. If it's like an eight and an eight and a half, I'm like, kudos to you, live action Netflix. Like, good for you. Like, uh, but if it's like a five, I'm like, okay, well, this is this is about what I generally thought it was going to be. Was gonna be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think there's certain things that I'm willing to look over. Like, I think the acting of the kids. I think I'm willing to look over some of the acting because I'm like, they're children. They're only going to get better. They're only. It, it, they don't need to be amazing. Um, the things I need from my show, from from this show, is from my show. It's mine. From this show <laughs> is that I want to. I want to one be like they have a grasp and an idea of the story and what these characters are going to become. Right. Right. Because if you watch season one of After Last Airbender and you've never seen up season two, season three, and then you watch this, you might be like, mm, everything is going great. And I might be like, well, there's a couple details. And it's like, well, is that really that important? And it's like, it's going to be, you know, right. so. You've seen the show over three times. Like, I'm like well, me. Right. You know, so it's like there are certain things where you might be like, that's not really important. And right. it ends up being important. Um, so so that's that's one thing. Like, I, I, Again, the acting, they're only going to get better. They're only going to get more, um, especially the children. Like, they're only going to get more confident in their roles. And and the act and the directing hopefully will understand some strengths and weaknesses. So if episode one there's some acting issues, by episode eight there might not be acting issues. I, I guarantee you, a show that's kind of has the same vibe, Stranger Things, like season mm-hmm. one, there's probably some bad acting. By season three, yeah, probably right. got flushed out, probably got a little bit better. So I, I get that. Um, so acting okay. My biggest thing is. Does the directors do they seem like they watched this show and loved right. the show and are passionate about this show and the world and the 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 themes and the storytelling and the foil of different characters and the arcs of different characters and um and the overarching just not just thinking about this story but also thinking about season two and season three all together. Um, and who knows? They might have a season four. I, I, I could definitely see them doing a part one, part two of season three. Uh, season three is very much two different seasons in yep. one. Um, that's what I want to see. Uh, again, the acting, even some of the like fight sequences. I'm like that. If every fight sequence is, if it's hit or miss, I'm okay with that. Um, I'd be okay with some of the CGI not being amazing. Like that's okay. Like I'm fine with that. My sure. biggest thing is make the story that we love and the characters we love come to real life right no i don't disagree um i also you know to give netflix credit right i and maybe you know the show but i don't know of any netflix show or netflix original that is bad i don't i just don't I, there's the crown there's bridgerton i mean they're all acclaimed shows like there's ozark yeah, i've already told you i don't i don't um 
you know, One Piece is good. I mean, I'm not a Stranger Things is good. I'm not a huge fan of, of Queen's Gambit. You already said that. Like, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, in general, it is you know, like, yeah. Gambit, but it's like, mm-hmm. um, uh, Netflix know. shows do a good job, especially their adaptations. Um, yeah, they have done, especially like their, their fantasy adapt. Wednesday is another one. Like, they've done a really good job at doing the adaptation of anything, even if it's an adaptation or a remake or whatever, or re retelling of a story from something that's like adult, a like young adult, like one piece anime Wednesday, like stranger things is an ad, is an adaptation, but stranger things is own thing. But like stranger things, like they are very good at this, like this, like fantasy, uh, adventure, preteen characters like they've, they've world building they did a really good right. job in a couple different those shows um you know like you said like ozark and like like other like the queen like but those aren't those type of shows you know they're mm-hmm. its own thing right um so i'm I really just, hoping this is a this is a one of those yeah i i just hope at least for like for me like i just haven't like i haven't seen a just a, a bad netflix show and so I, I just hope that this isn't the first one. <laughs> I really our favorite. Yeah, it's our favorite. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's why I'm giving Netflix some credit because they haven't failed me yet, mm-hmm. um, per se. I think the the weakest one that I've seen is probably is probably Wednesday, um, but it was still okay. Like I didn't hate it, I didn't love yeah. it, but it was fine. Um, so I just hope it's at least minimum that, but. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'm prepared to watch a series that has its own vibe, its own thing. It's eight episodes. Um, it very looks, very much looks like it's changing some things around. As long as it gives me the vibe and the story seems like it's going to be the same, and the characters are feel like they are, I'm fine with some curveballs. Um, so I mean, I, I'm because I'm not trying to get a, a piece for piece <laughs> thing. I mean. It, no one wants that realistically. Everyone says they want it, but I know you do. I know you do. I do. No, one, no one really, I mean, realistically, it's, it'd be nice to sit down and watch something new and have a new adventure. Right. Um, my thing is I want to do adventure with the characters I like and the, and the overarching story that I like. No. Um, don't make Avatar this airbender, not Avatar this airbender and call it that, you know, and <laughs> fortunately like a one piece, for instance, you know, I'm not a thousand percent sure, but I think season one of like eight episodes is like, is like 70 or 80 episodes in the anime so like they're very much just saying this is kind of like this is a story that's kind of based off of this like, avatar is 20 episodes that you're making an eight you have to kind of stick to the story in a sense um and because we talk about it, it's so perfect this <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> was like so I, we'll see what I, what I hope it doesn't happen is that there's like dramatic cut scenes that like Oh, it goes from like the Southern Water Tribe, and then there's suddenly an Omashu, like randomly if, after a cutscene. Like they need to be flying. They need, they need to show Appa and the gang flying. To go, and, yeah. And then cutting to maybe landing in Omashu, something like that. I just hope it's not like a random cutscene. Like, yeah, that would be weird storytelling. I mean, I, I, I could see is maybe them flying up. And, ha- and talking or whatever, and then it cuts to Zuko or Zhao or right. another character, and it cuts back and they're flying, and it's like obviously they were when they left, it was nighttime, and now it's morning time. Sure. It's like okay, obviously they've been flying for at least six hours, sure. you know, and now and now they're showing up here. So right. um, yeah, I mean that's that's the hopeful yes right. of it. Um, right. So real quick. Uh, I'm gonna end it here. Or cabbage fruit. Yeah, I think I think we got it. I mean, cabbage yeah. truth. Thanks, yeah. thanks for coming on yeah. and uh, joining us on this podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you, and uh, we're excited for um, the live action coming out. And uh, as Avatar fans, you know, ca- be cautiously optimistic, or be optimistic, or not be optimistic. Or be pessimistic. You know what? Be or whatever be you want to be. <laughs> like, be whatever you want to be. Yeah. Give it a six yeah. and a half out of ten, like I did, or have it be a ten out of ten. It's up to you. Who knows? Yeah, no, I'm excited for it too, and um, and we'll see. We're gonna be putting our reviews up per episode as well coming up next week. So um, definitely check those out. And uh, 
Go Cabbage Crew.